Good morning. Good morning. Praise and peace to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, on this wonderful morning of sunshine and love. Good to see each and every one of you this morning. This is our fourth service this morning here at the Purple Door Church. Four here, but actually there'll be two going on at St. Mark's as well. So we are so delighted you're here. If you're new, welcome. I want to invite everyone, if you're able, to take a moment past the registration pads and any special prayer needs that you have or you want to fill out one of the prayer cards, they're located in the pew racks in front of you. You can look for those and you'll turn those in into the service to an usher or in one of the prayer boxes. We'd be happy to have our team pray for you. And we have a lot going on today, but a lot of great things. We have 11 new members joining today and a few in this service. So we look forward to that. We're going to have the leadership team come in a moment and take a few moments before we begin today to share. But let me just share a few other announcements. We want to highlight that our card ministry, it's a group that makes special cards for all occasions. They're going to have cards available for sale next Sunday in the Great Hall. So just keep that in the back of your mind. There'll be the opportunity that there, I received several of those um, throughout the year and also sent some, and they're just so beautiful. So it may be an opportunity for you to, to check those out. Also, many of you are aware that faithful church member and a friend, Diane Fulton, passed away in January. Chris is right here in the front row, her husband. And we're going to celebrate her life in a memorial service this coming Saturday, the 21st, at Schrodinger Funeral Home, the new building on Hoover. And that will be 
this Saturday, the 21st, Chris Nathaniel would like to invite all to come to celebrate her life. There'll be visitation from 12 noon to 1, and then we'll have her celebration of moral service. I'll be leading at 1 o'clock. Uh, it is like celebrate Diane. And then we'll have a reception afterwards. So please mark that down. There'll be more information in the blast or email that comes out in an instant. But let us now quiet our hearts. And before we have the prelude, we want to have, I said quiet our hearts for the prelude, but we have something pretty big we're going to do that's different. And that's why the pastor um, needs to be careful. He doesn't fall in the same routine. So Mindy, if you want to come up front with the leadership team, We've had the leadership team of our church and all four of our services, well, it will be four when they go over to the next service. So in 2012, our church went to a, a governance model, model of leadership of a single leadership board, basically as overseers to champion the mission and vision of the church with sub teams of ministry um, involved underneath their leadership. And this is our team for 2022. Uh, I wanted you to put a, a name of the face, but also know, once again, many of these people you already know because they're friends of yours. They're all brothers and sisters in Christ. We want to introduce them today and then have a prayer. You're going to be seeing them a lot in the future because I'd like to have some times we have congregational discussions or town halls or just up-to-date things and they're committed to that. So we're gonna go down, and there's a microphone around the corner, and they're briefly going to just share their name and just maybe something about themselves or about their hope for the church just real quickly. Should be on. Can you turn that on? We'll get Julius here, he'll get it. Good right. morning. One more time. Good morning. There you go, I got it. Um, I'm Mindy Garbrick, and I have been. Uh, I grew up here in this church. Um, I grew up just down the street, and my husband and I have raised our two kids here, who are now young adults of the church. Um, so I've been on. I've been a member for a while. I've been on the leadership team for a couple years. It's a blessing, and it is a great honor um, to serve you in this way. Good morning, Aaron Brill. Uh, my family and myself have attended Purple Door for the past little over five years. We celebrated the uh, the baptism. Thank you. I've done this <laughs> twice already. We forgot the baptism of our, our two lovely children uh, five years ago yesterday. Uh, so it's been great getting to know everyone. Looking forward to getting to know all of you even more um, and serve how we can. Doug Reed, I've been attending Purple Door since 1987, and I look forward to serving on the leadership team. And if I don't know you, please introduce yourself. I know most of you here, but not everyone. Good morning, Diana Bernard. My husband and I, uh, Jim, have been members since 1974, and in 2013, I uh, stepped down and retired as your financial secretary for 25 years service. Good morning. I'm Dave Baker. I was born and raised as a Methodist in 1995. I transferred my membership to this church. I've been blessed in my faith journey to have several mentors, both previous and currently, that guide me with questions of faith. And my dream for the Purple Door family is that everyone will find a, a number of leaders who are willing to step forward and share their times and talents to lead others in their faith journey. Good morning, my name is Becky Fessler, and I'm from the St. Mark's campus. And I am so glad to be a part of this team and the growth of both campuses and look forward to the future. Good morning, church. My name is Kevin Balo, and uh, I also was born and raised in the United Methodist Church. My wife and I moved to Grove City in 2000, December 2014, and we shortly uh, joined as members here uh, shortly after that. 
Uh, our two little girls go to the Purple Door Christian Child Care here every day, so I'm someone who's in this building six days a week at least. Um, and at that time, we just fell in love with this church, not just the place, but the people. Um, and my, my goal, my vision, my desire for this church is to see this congregation grow, not just in, in the form of numbers of, of people, but also in our love of Jesus Christ. Thanks. Good morning, my name is David Walters. I've been with this church 37 years now. My wife Carol and I just absolutely love being here. I'm heavily invested in the missions part of this church. I uh, do a lot of stuff with the missions, community meal, the cafe, the donuts, um, and our mission trips. And I invite all of you to join the missions team in some way, doing something to make our lives and the lives of those people in our community better. Thank you. Hi, my name is Abby Gonzalez. Um, I've been a Methodist for six years now, and I've been serving at St. Mark's campus in Iglesia Hispana for more over a year. And my dream for this church, for all campuses, is to see people wanting to serve God and learn more about God and show God's love to others. And I love everything the Pastor Lise is doing over there at St. Mark's, and we would love to see you there one day to be all together. Hi, I'm Peg Addington. Uh, my husband John and I joined this church in 1977 before our son was born, baptized. Both our kids were baptized by Carl Wiley. Um, I'm very involved in United, it's not United Women in Faith, United Methodist Women. You'll know my license plate. I'm a UMW on my license plate. But um, my dream for this church is that everyone will know the love of Christ and that everyone, and I mean everyone, will be welcome loved by Jesus in this church. Thank you. Now I say a word about, this is your leadership team. You said, who are the leaders? Well, the Lord Jesus is the leader, right? Of course, we have a bishop and your pastors, but here's your lay leaders of the church. You're looking great, right? <laughs> so Mindy's the chair. I think you know this. Most of you know this. But it's good to just remind. Um, also, want to say that um, for those, I I always like to put this before, we are now one church in two campuses where we meet in different locations. We have the Grove City campus here, but also St. Mark's campus on Sullivan Avenue. Three pastors, Pastor Randy, Pastor Lizzie, and myself, are three for all the campuses. Pastor Lizzie primarily preaches over at St. Mark's. We have the English and in Spanish services at St. Mark's, okay? So many of you have been there, but if not, great place because next Saturday we're having a cleaning day <laughs> and we want to make sure you remember that, okay? So uh, one other thing I want to say, I just over there, but I was thinking, this is a group that's open to hearing from you. This is not the cold water committee. What I mean by that is when they hear a good idea, they just pour cold water on it. That's not them, but they're a live committee. And I'm going to have them spread out through the middle aisle. We're taking time today. We wanted to do this. If you guys just walk down the center aisle, and we're all going to stand, we're going to have a prayer for you, and then they're going to go over in the other service, and Pastor Brandy's going to lead them over there. But you'll go just down the center aisle, and these are your leaders. If you're new here, these are new friends, perhaps. I'm going to invite everyone if you're able, and I understand some are not able, but if you're able, would you stand one more time? And if you want to put your hand out towards them, I'm going to say a prayer for them today. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you and praise you for the gift of this day, the opportunities you give us to serve you and serve people. And I thank you for this crew that you have placed before us for this year, for 2022. Thank you for the gifts that they bring and the love for you and for this church. I thank you for their families. I ask God to protect their families and bless them. And we ask that they'll always seek your counsel daily, seek wisdom and guidance from you. Fill them with patience and peace and understanding. Help them champion the values and mission of this church and protect them from all harm. We love you. We commit our service to you and commit them to you. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's give God some praise for our leaders.
You may be seated. Now I'd like to invite Julie to lead us as we worship today.
gracious and holy God, our hearts are full of praise and adoration for you today as we gather in this place, as we walk out the front door or the back door today, we walked into the sunshine, and Lord, we were just overwhelmed that the one who created the sun knows our name. How wonderful, how marvelous is your love for us today. We rejoice in you. We celebrate you today. And we ask God that you'll speak to our hearts today, that we might be filled anew with joy. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I guess I'd like to invite the ushers to come and wait upon us as we share in the morning offering.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bring these gifts in gratitude for the love with which you have claimed us and the hope you have inspired in our hearts. When we've lived in darkness, you've given light to help us find our way. Receive these gifts as expressions of our gratitude and evidence of our hope. Transform them with your grace that we and all your world will discover the fullness of the life to which you call us. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we ask these things. Amen. You may be seated. excited about that. We are also celebrating two baptisms today. And at the end of this sermon, we're going to bring two new members into the church here among us. So I'm excited to welcome them with you. Before we do that, I want to make sure that you're still awake here. So I want to take you to one more scripture and make sure that you're with me and you're awake. I'd like you to hear your own voice. If you can see the screen, if you could read this scripture with me at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. Many of you know it by heart, but let's read it together from the screen in front of you. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become the old self, the old way, the old woman, the old man has passed away. Well, certainly the Apostle Paul is not 
talking about just our physical bodies that are perishing, but this world that we live in, this society, this culture is consumed with outward appearance. You know that. Isn't that true? Think about that for a moment. How many here remember the television show? It ran for nine years on ABC entitled Extreme Makeover Home Edition. You might remember that from 2003 to 2012. Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Well, actually, that was the second show in that line. For one year, ABC ran a show that was simply entitled Extreme Makeover. And it wasn't redoing homes, it was redoing outward appearances of people. They followed up later another network with the show The Swan. Anybody remember a show like that? So what they did in the show, very, very interesting, is they would take individuals who wanted a makeover, and not the normal makeovers, where your person gets a new haircut or a new outfit, or they change their makeup. They decide this would be extreme makeover. And so they would take these individuals, they would separate them from their loved ones for a season of time, and they would put them on a diet, they would put them on a fitness routine, they would perhaps do plastic surgery, change their nose, change their facial features, they would um, also give them braces, they would change their eyesight, correct their eyesight, maybe laser surgery as well, and then they would need a few weeks and perhaps months to heal from all this, and Finally, they would have this big reveal. They'd bring people out. They had not seen their loved ones, perhaps in several weeks or maybe even months, and they would show this on television. Wow, these people were transformed on the outside. Remember this? And in fact, I went back and tried to do a little research, and I found some of the original people who were on the show who went through the transformation. This is real stuff. So I thought we'd have some fun and show you a few of these people. So before and after pictures, right? This is the actual show from 2002, so that's been 20 years ago, okay? Here's the first person, before and after, Kim. Nice lady, Kim, there, take a look at Kim. Here is she after the makeover. Kim, doesn't look like the same person, does it? That's, this is real here, okay? Uh, here's another person, Regina. Here's Regina, Hi, Regina. And here is she after the reveal. Gina, okay. two more. La Paula, nice lady, La Paula. Here she is after the reveal. You can see she changed her hair. <laughs> and one more person here, Susan. It's like Susan could be a nice friend, right? Nice person, nice smile. Here's Su Susan. Wow. Okay. And so this is what our culture is consumed with. People love shows like this. You go on YouTube, you can find a lot of transformations before and after pictures, right? Now, some of you may be aware, most of you in this room know, that I was pastor here for six years, from 2008 to 2014, but we have a lot of new people in our church. You know, we've had a lot of people pass away. We've had a lot of people new. So I'm going to speak to the new people, or maybe you're a, a guest today as well, and you wouldn't know this about the pastor here, me, is that I've had an extreme makeover from my time when I was here before. Um, some of you don't know this because all you see is this hump today that Rachel knows well, right? <laughs> but here's a picture, and those people who were here before remember the old Dennis before I came back in 2021. There I am. <laughs> Okay, and of course you know me today, it's this. <laughs> but we love a good makeover, don't we? The Apostle Paul talked about a makeover, but this nation is consumed with all of this. In fact, one more fun thing. Um, I read a bumper sticker a while back, and wow, this is pretty blunt, but I want you to think about it. It says this, I may be fat, but you're ugly, and I can die. <laughs> This nation's obsessed with diet pills and bad diets, but also it's important to have good health and keep yourself physically. We all know that. But let's get serious here. 
God wants to give all of us an extreme makeover from the inside out. The Apostle Paul wrote this again. I want to look at this scripture. Therefore, anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, who wrote those words? It was a man in the Bible named Saul. Let me tell you about Saul, for those who have forgotten. Saul was a leader in the early first century Jewish community. He was strong-willed. He was highly educated. In fact, he would be uh, very quick to give his credentials. He was trained at the feet of Gamaliel, he said. The best. He went to the best schools. Like some of us say, he went to the Ivy League schools. Went to this, went to that. He was opinionated. And he was zealous for the law. He was a leader amongst leaders. That's who Saul was. Saul was so zealous to defend Judaism that he even sought out people who were off the mark, who were astray, who were causing beliefs to come in to what he felt was the truth, that he was willing to persecute those people. And the early church, the Christian movement called the way, was one of those groups. See, Christianity was not a brand new religion. It was a fulfillment, it was part of Judaism. In fact, the early Christians, those early disciples, never left one religion to go to another. For the rest of their whole life, they were still Jews. But they believed that they had found the Messiah, the hope of the world, the longing of Israel in Jesus. The Apostle Paul didn't, uh, sorry, Saul didn't believe that. And Saul was so zealous, he felt that these individuals who followed the risen Christ were part of a cult. Have you ever known anyone part of a cult or had family members who were part of a cult or friends and you did everything you could to get them out of this false church or this movement because you felt it was dangerous for them? That's the way that Saul felt. He was zealous so much that he persecuted those that he felt was leading away from the truth. In fact, he explained this later to King Agrippa in Acts chapter 26. Let me just read this to you, verses 9 through 11. Here's how he explained it. He says, I used to believe that I ought to do everything I could to oppose the followers of Jesus of Nazareth. Authorized by the leading priest, I caused many of the believers in Jerusalem to be sent to prison. I cast my vote against them when they were condemned to death. Many times... I had them whipped in the synagogues to try to get them to curse Christ. I was so violently opposed to them that I even hounded them in distant cities and foreign lands. So Saul was not simply a police man trying to fulfill his duties. He was a leader. He was an organizer. He was on a mission to rid Israel and the world of this virus. He was extreme that he was willing to even promote violence for his beliefs. Does that happen today? Absolutely. Islamic terrorists, they believe what they believe enough that they're the extremist that will do whatever they can, maybe even cause violence for their cause. Happens in very, very extreme Christian circles as well. White supremacy, where people will push to a point, we've seen that in history, in 1993. Uh, we see where people cause violence in the name of what they believed was true or as a way to act against another and they thought it was justified. And so we have these incidents where people standing on, quote, truth, bringing violence and harm to others. But what happened to Saul? Something changed. It's what they read in our scripture today in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 9, they read it again. This is Luke explaining what happened. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. There he is, he's persecuting. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus. So Damascus was like a faraway city, I mean, at least you know, 100 miles north of it all. So he was willing to travel down to Cincinnati to persecute people down there, so to speak, right? When he went to the high priest, he asked, 
or letters. So if found, if he found anyone there who belonged to the way, which was the early description of the church, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. As he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. So what happened to Saul, to Paul, was much more than a name change. Actually, the name change didn't take place until the 13th chapter of Acts. And the name change wasn't really just they changed his name because he became a follower of Christ. Actually, it's, it's simpler than that. The word Saul, the name Saul, the name Paul are the exact same names. One is in Hebrew and one is in Greek. And so when the focus went into the Greek world, the Roman world, he started being called by his name in Greek, which was Paul. But the change that took place was something greater. The change happened because he had met Jesus. He had met Christ. When he was writing to Christians in Corinth, in the 15th chapter, he explained all the people that had met Jesus, or some of them, and then he said, I did as well. And that's why he called himself an apostle. In his letters, you'll see the apostle Paul. The word disciple and apostle are different words. They're not exactly the same. An apostle is an eyewitness to the resurrection. So for the rest of his life, the apostle Paul said, I met Jesus. I'm an eyewitness. Here's the question. Have you met Jesus? Can you say you've met Jesus? Not have you heard about him? Have you read about him in the history book? Do you know a lot about religion? Have you met Jesus personally? Because when Jesus comes, he changes us from the inside out. He begins to work on our lives. He begins to fill us with the fruits of the Holy Spirit. I'm not talking about simply being a better person. Now, all of us want to be a better person, no matter whether we believe or not. I mean, let's be fair to people. People want to be better, I believe, for all. No one sets out and says, I'm just going to destroy people's lives today. I mean, there may be a few, but most people don't. Most people want to be better than people. I love the little cartoon where the guy was praying to the Lord, Lord, make me the kind of man my dog thinks I am. <laughs> I mean, most of us want to be a good person. But the truth is, although God does change our behavior over time, Jesus didn't come simply to make bad people good. Jesus came to make dead people live. See, now you're wide awake because I raised my voice there. Jesus came to wake us up and to fill us with life and hope. Have you ever known a person that he, they had all the knowledge, they had all the, they could argue everything, and they're always right? You know anybody like that? I don't mean nudging anyone next to you, okay? But have you ever known someone even in regards to faith and religion and Christianity, they always have all the answers, but they're grumpy about it? <laughs> See, there's a difference between just knowing about someone and knowing the person. And that's what happened to Saul. He knew all about the Hebrew scriptures. He knew the truth. And truth is important. I don't want to underestimate that. But he did not know Jesus. When Jesus comes, this is the point today, he begins to fill us with the fruits of the Spirit. There were listed in Galatians, love, joy, peace, patience. Do we need a little more patience? in this world in Columbus, Ohio today. Another one is self-control. Do we need any self-control? No, I do in life. Love, joy, do you need any joy? That's not determined on how we're feeling or what we had for supper last night. Kindness, goodness, faithful. Those are marks of a Methodist, friends. Those are marks of Christians fruits of the Spirit. Have you met Jesus? God wants to do an extreme makeover in each of us. And I don't believe it's a one-time deal. He's still working on me. 
and he's still working on all of us into the likeness of Christ. So let's read it again one more time as we close. I love this. There's hope for us, see? Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you don't give up on us. You didn't give up on Saul. You had a mission and he went out and changed the world when you met him. Meet us today at this altar. Meet us today in this place. Thank you for your forgiveness and grace. That the old is gone. We bury it under the cross. And we live for you today. We choose you today. In Christ's name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, today, as we close, the best is yet to come. Because we're taking in two of our members today. We have 11 total, but we spread them out throughout the morning and so at this time I'd like to ask Joyce and Donna they're both here if they would come up and uh, we're just going to bring them into membership today we are excited to have them on Joyce how are you good and they're coming and transferring in um, we're just delighted to have both of you today and um, as we gather today they've already professed faith in Christ but I always take a moment for us to renew as they renew then you renew as well so donna meek and joyce keller are here and we're going to have first of all most people didn't share today but donna wanted to share a few things right okay good did you why don't you have a mic here yeah, i have a little voice I'd just like to speak on my experience with this church. I came here for the first time around Easter 2015, and uh, soon after I was approached by the late and great Charlie Bessie and Sue Muller. Um, from there, Sue invited me to two different Bible studies. Um, I was made to feel so welcome initially that there was no way I could not return. And I would like to say that I, I did feel Jesus' presence here, and I feel it every time I walk through the doors. Um, everyone welcomed me with open arms, didn't know me from Adam. Um, the whole church has lifted me up and supported me through many life challenges, serious health issues, depression, housing struggles, a broken knee. You all have been there for me at one point or another, and I just appreciate you, and I feel so very blessed. You've shown me the love of Jesus in every way, shape, and form. I can't go into all the stuff that people have done. You've just really stepped up. Um, over time, I was shown Jesus' love, and you genuinely care for people, and that's the kind of church I was looking for. I wanted a church that was Bible-based and faith-driven and community-driven. And God answered my prayer and exceeded that. Um, between Dennis Moeller's sermons deeply impacting me and all of you just loving on me and sharing your unrelenting faith, it just has been life-changing. And um, the pastors and preachers are all outstanding. I never walk away not learning something that is useful, something that perhaps I didn't know or is reinforced. Um, I feel like this church exemplifies Jesus in a way that Jesus would be proud of. The fellowship isn't just inside the church walls, it extends beyond. And I just think that's amazing. Um, the other thing that makes it special today is I'm joining just after Easter, seven years later. Um, I'm excited about joining and becoming a member. And also, this is the anniversary of Charlie's passing. 
So it's extra special for me. I'm sure that he's looking down on me and smiling, very proud of me. And um, I just, I love you guys. And I'm just, it's my huge honor to join the church today. We love you. We love you. Thank you. Joyce is coming from Circleville as a transfer today of membership here too. So welcome. But here is the questions that we have. You've answered these before. But here, here, here are the questions. You've answered these before, but we we ask again. Before God and all of us. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? So say, I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and pledge your allegiance to his kingdom? And so say, I do. I do. And as members of this congregation, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church by faithfully participating in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service, and your witness. If so, say, I will by God's help. I will. I will by God's help. Mm -hmm. And now I have a question for you about them. Will you do everything you can to encourage them, to befriend them, to pray for them, to support them in their Christian life as they support you? If so, say with great gusto, we will. Let's try one more time. Make sure they hear you. One, two, three. We will. Did you hear that? Good. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for Joyce and Donna for their faith journey from the past, how you walked with them for many years and brought them here to this family at this point in their life. Bless them. Fill them with your presence and peace. Continue to walk with them all the days of their life. Let they, them be encouraged and be encouragement to others and find their ministry in this place. We know, Lord, of your love. And I ask that you'll continue to bless them until you call them home to be with you in heaven someday. For all this we pray in Jesus' name. All God's people said. Amen. 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 Let's praise God for these two today. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Choice. Thank you. Welcome. Maybe see you. Thank God. All right. Let's stand together. Let's sing our final song. Just one verse of my tribute. Page 99. The words will be on the screen. Jesus Christ, let us go with joy and fellowship of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore.